Let's learn a nice little melody today. It looks like this. So the instrument that we're working with today is an F astronaut from Ravvast, which is a variation of the F low pygmy scale. It's an F2 in the center, but this can work on any scale as well. Um, and you might want to adjust it to play around with it and um, create something similar, but that suits what you want to make. So first things first, left hand on the center tone, like so. Then we're going to jump all the way up to note seven here. We're going to play that with the right hand. And actually, this is also the same tone as the ding, it's just two octaves higher. You also have another one here, right? So, from here, we're just gonna lead with our left, right, left, right, all the way down. We're just gonna go down the scale. But once we get to note number three, then we're gonna turn around and come back up again. with me ready one two off we go one and two three and four again again one more time nice so the second time around that we play this, it's basically the same until here, then we just strike here twice and hold it and wait and leave a breather. So it sounds like this, first part and the second part. So we've got those three strikes just to breathe, to feel the space in between. I always talk about this in my videos and my classes. It's really important in these space between the beats that we're leaving plenty of space and that we're leaving different amounts of space all the time. Otherwise, it just sounds like this, right? It's the space between the strikes that actually make it musical and that make it sound good. So those are the first two lines. The third line is exactly the same as line number one. Line number four is another variation of it, and looks like this. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting, instead of starting on note number seven all the way up here, I'm starting on note number five here, and I'm just moving down four tones. So I'm playing these four here. And to make this really easy for myself so I don't have to move so much, I'm using my fingers on these two notes and then my thumbs on these two notes. So I can just rotate to get to the next note, right? So if I play the last two lines together, it looks like this. So you'll notice that on line number three, I'm finishing here, right? And then on line number four, the final part, I start here again, so I'm kind of retaking after striking that center tone. So let's play those two lines together. So line three and line four. Ready? One, two, off we go. One and two. One and two and three and four and 
Oops. <laughs> and two and three. And I messed up. But it doesn't matter because any note that you play on this instrument is going to sound beautiful anyway. All right. So when we put all four parts together, it looks like this. One, two, nice and steady. One. sounds really really nice nice and slow and steady but if you wanted to you can practice playing that a little bit quicker it acts as a really nice activity for getting your kind of scale shapes in the right place so you can do that as well I also really like when I've got those gaps to start to feel it with my hands playing some ghost notes here and there. Yeah, so you can fill that out differently if you want to. Alright, so that's pattern number one. Pattern number two then is based more on chords. I like to have these two different elements so that we can switch from one section to another and it sounds nice and different. It sounds like you've got some movement. So first of all, playing the ding and note number two. If you're on a different type of pygmy scale, um, then this actually might be a different note altogether. And that's also fine. Whatever sounds good to you. So on this, I'm counting one and two and, and then I'm slapping on the three on the edge of the instrument. I find it a little bit tricky to get a nice tack sound on these ravs, um, so often I like to knock instead, and I'm using this part of my knuckle right here. Um, but again, it's up to you what sound you prefer. So these notes together, one and two and three and four and, and then I'm playing it again on the and. Having that dominant strike on the and kind of gives it a little bit more of an edge, makes it a little bit more unexpected feels kind of fun. So all the way through so far, we've been playing one and two and kind of everything is one after the other like this. So for this section, having all of that space and then coming in slightly earlier than expected, one and two and three and four and 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 just gives it something a little bit more interesting. So that's the first little section. One and two, three and four, and one and two and three and four and. And that's it, just two counts. And then moving on to the next one, which again is the ding again, We're always gonna stay here. And then note number three, and it's exactly the same rhythm. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So one time on the one, and then one time on the and that comes just before the one, right? So the end of the four. And then we move on to the next chord. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. So all we've done again is move up one note, keeping one hand on the ding, right? So if I put all of those parts together, it looks like this. One, So 
if you're getting those ands in the right places, you're doing really, really well. It's a little bit tricky, that, especially for a beginner, but I think it makes for a more interesting sounding piece. So we've got all of that space there now, and you'll notice that I'm kind of, every now and then, I'm adding these little ghost notes just to keep myself in time. I'm also bobbing about a little bit. Maybe you can't see that if I'm using the overhead. Um, but just, I'm using all these different ways to keep myself in time when I've got all of that space to think about and to not start rushing, right? You need a way that's gonna keep you going. Maybe it's a tap of the foot, right? Maybe it's a nod of the head, moving the body, or using ghost notes to keep yourself in time. You can also then start to fill in that space if you want to. putting a little pattern at the end of that count on note number one here. Something really simple, but just gives it a little bit more pizzazz, <laughs> I guess. Or you could explore somewhere else on the scale. One and two. starting to get a little bit more advanced now and that comes in this is why the ghost notes are really handy because then you can kind of figure out where to place those as you experiment for now i invite you to just choose one note maybe two notes and choose a specific place within the count that you're going to put it and practice that over and over again before you try to jump into improvising or if improvising feels more natural to you than counting then you can do it that way it's entirely up to you just take it in baby steps and move nice and slowly um, and it will come so those are the two little rhythms and they sound nice when you put them together. So here's a little demonstration of how you might play this melody that we've learned and this chord progression that we've learned. Here we go. So one section after the other with a couple of little improvised moments that again will start to come naturally to you over time. I hope you enjoyed this one and if you'd like to look at some other patterns that you can play that are quite easy but also quite satisfying then check out this video next and I hope to see you in the future. Thank you so much for watching. See you very soon.